All right. All right, good afternoon. I am Costa Constantinidis, Chair of the Environmental Protection Committee. This is the first of our two hearings. First, we're going to have a hearing on the bills we're voting out of committee this morning, and then we will have our, hear our regularly scheduled air quality hearing. Um, today we'll be hearing and voting on three bills related to energy storage, energy aggregation, and thermal energy systems. This committee has uh, led the city's efforts to respond to the climate change disaster, disaster by enacting legislation to require the installation of uh, solar PV and geothermal systems on city buildings. We've also uh, been driving the initiatives based on our to greenhouse gas reductions. We had passed 8050, what feels like a very long time ago in 2014, uh, and then most recently passed uh, the Climate Mobilization Act uh, which was 1253A and others calling for reductions in large buildings, but we have a lot more to do. Multiple studies have shown that environmental stressors and benefits are inequitably distributed through across the city, often saddling low-income and majority-minority communities with far more than their fair share of consequences for the modern conveniences enjoyed by all. Even small fluctuations in airborne pollutants uh, can have vastly consequential effects on public health and why our city's air quality has been steadily improving. There are still many communities breathing dirtier air than their neighbors. Renewable energy sources are clean, inexhaustible, and increasingly cost-effective. They differ from fossil fuels in their diversity, abundance, and potential for use anywhere on the planet. But above all, that they produce neither greenhouse gases, which cause climate change, nor polluting emissions that cause respiratory illness. The combustion of fuel oil, whether for energy production, indoor climate control, the production of hot water is one of the city's greatest sources of greenhouse gas and particulate emissions. It is our moral imperative to break our addiction to burning fossil fuels as soon as possible, not only to reduce greenhouse gas output, but also steps to mitigate the worst effects of climate change. That means we have to cut our particular emissions and render immediate tangible health benefits to the residents of New York City. Battery storage is one of the key solutions for the misalignment between the, the supply and demand curves of solar energy. And further implementation will allow us to increase re uh, re reliance on locally produced emissions-free renewable energy production. Community aggregation models allow participants to bundle the purchasing power of various municipalities or entities in order to purchase bulk energy uh, fixed prices by bargaining collectively as a block Participants are able to negotiate for rates that would not be available to individual actors while maintaining transmission and distribution services while ex with, from existing utilities. Climate control and hot water production account for 57% of the citywide energy, energy consumption. And city studies have shown that buildings where hot water production is decoupled from space heating boilers had substantially lower rates of fuel consumption than buildings where these two functions were serviced by the same equipment. Similarly, other thermal energy systems, such as ground or air source heat exchangers, use the ambient temperature of the air or ground to reduce the energy that must be expended on indoor climate control. These technologies allow us to perform these necessary functions without relying so heavily on the combustion of fuel oils. Proposed intro 49A would require the Department of Citywide Administrative Services, DCAS, to conduct a feasibility study on the installation of utility-scale battery storage systems on city buildings, including installation and use of each available type of utility-scale energy storage systems in each city building, and submit to the mayor and the speaker a copy of such study. Following the study, the department or any other authorized agency is required to install utility-style st energy storage systems on all st city buildings where the energy study determines the installation is cost-effective. Intro 140-A would require the city to conduct a feasibility study and plan on community choice aggregation for energy purchasing. If the city recommends implement, implement, implementing such, such programs, the office shall, on or before December 31st, 2021, develop and make public available online a plan for implementing such programs. Intro 426-A would require that DCAS conduct a feasibility on the cost of installing solar water heating and thermal energy systems on city-owned buildings and mandate the installation when identified as cost-effective. These bills respond to the calls for transition we've heard so powerfully 
from our youth this past Friday. Uh, I recommend a yes vote on this legislation and happy Climate Week to all as we begin a week of focusing on all of these issues and how we can make our communities uh, more sustainable, more resilient. So which that I will turn it over to the clerk for a vote. Matthew DiStefano, Committee Clerk, Committee on Environmental Protection. Roll call vote on in proposed intro numbers 49A, 140A, and 426A. Chair Constantinidis. Vote aye. Espinal. I vote aye. Levin. Aye. Yeager. Aye. By a vote of four in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, the items have been adopted. Great. Thank you to our uh, legislative attorneys, Samara Swanston, our poly anal policy analysts, uh, Nadia Johnson and Nikki Chala, my own legislative counsel, uh, Nick Wazowski. Um, I think we have a few minutes to turn over tapes. I know that, can we give, Donovan Richards said, uh, Councilmember Richards said he's walking over. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna give him five minutes and then we're gonna switch the tapes. Thank you. <laughs> 